Hi everyone, Paul here, and welcome back to An Ear for Men. Uh, first, let me say thank you to those who have already subbed to my channel, and especially for your kind words in the comments here and on the Voice for Men channel and website. Also, after I've made five videos which are cross-posted to the A Voice for Men channel from here to help get the word out, I will not be posting future videos of this kind on that channel. This channel will be dedicated strictly to men's wellness, while the other is mainly there for activism. If you are viewing this on the AVFM channel, you will find a link in the low bar to the new AEFM channel. I invite you to come sub if this kind of material interests you or if you just want to support other men trying to improve their lives. And now for today's essay on self-respect. Notice I did not title this with the tried and true psychobabble of self-esteem. There's a good reason for that. Self-esteem is how you feel about yourself. Since feelings change on a regular basis, going up and down with moods or events, it is assured that your self-esteem cannot be evenly or consistently maintained. Like happiness, it can never be a constant. It is an unreliable measurement, a poor goal unless your aim is frustration and failure. Self-respect is another matter. Self-respect is not a feeling, it is an action. Rather, it is a set of ongoing behaviors that have nothing to do with how you feel. Self-respect is about how you treat yourself and what kind of treatment you will tolerate from others. It is the rules that govern your life and whether or not you enforce them. You can be feeling high or low and still respect yourself. It is just that simple. There's no need to complicate it, nor is there any rationale or justified reason for refusing to take responsibility for it. It is measurable and can be provable at any given point in your day, or for that matter, in your life. No one can always measure or prove how they feel about themselves, but they can clearly see in any life circumstance how they are treating themselves and how they allow others to treat them. It is not an understatement to say that without self-respect, self-esteem is impossible to achieve, even temporarily. If your way means that respecting yourself is a non-negotiable cardinal rule in your life, then self-esteem, should you even bother to care about such a thing, will take care of itself. That's the advantage of seeing things in terms of respect versus esteem. The first is achievable. The second is a pipe dream packaged by alleged mental health professionals and sold with the understanding that the quest for the unattainable will keep people walking back in their doors looking for it and feeling inferior for not having found it which means they will only be driven to come back again and again. This may not be the conscious intention of the practitioner, but it is the outcome nonetheless. Indeed, their level of self-respect may be as or even more lacking than their clients. They are often trapped in the same rut with the same lie, trying awkwardly and failing to feel adequate at their work or perhaps even their lives. They aren't wizards after all. They're just human beings, and if they are peddling self-esteem, they probably don't know what they're doing. You need not pay the price for that. You can learn to practice self-respect the moment you decide that's what you're going to do. A therapist or counselor cannot make it happen for you, and if you can make it happen, which you can in all likelihood, you don't need a therapist or a counselor. That does add a degree of difficulty because it puts the responsibility in your lap. The onus is on you to get it done. Of course, that's true of everything else in life worth working for. The good news is that self-respect is a learned behavior. You can practice self-respect, and with practice, you only get better. Sometimes it requires courage, especially for men who have not been taught to respect themselves, either from their families or other significant relationships. Frequently, men who come from abusive families end up in abusive relationships, repeating the cycle over and over. 
Add that to the way society often treats men as disposable utilities and you end up with a lack of self-respect in men on a cultural level. This does not have to be the definition of your life. If you want respect from yourself and others, take it. If you want people to respect you, reject and distance yourself from anyone who doesn't. Respect is not negotiated. It's not something you get by winning an argument, by proving what a good person you are. And it is not love. It is not something you have to earn. Trying to earn the respect of others has the direct implication that you are not respecting yourself to begin with. If you are respecting yourself, you can bet you won't have to earn it from anyone worth it. You will also find a natural tendency in yourself to treat others with respect. In fact, I never met someone who respected themselves who did not treat others in the same way. If someone disrespects you, walk away. If it is a family member, walk away. If it is a wife or girlfriend or a woman you just met and find incredibly attractive, walk away. Feel whatever grief you must, but turn your back and go. Don't let her be the one who got away. Let her be the one to whom you showed the door. Grief, like happiness, is transient. It will pass, but your personal agency will be forged on what you do. It will be durable and lasting. If this sounds like a man up message, it isn't. It's a message about your humanity. It applies to women too, but they're not my concern in this place. There are a lot of ways to fuel the trip for men going their own way and taking charge of their own destiny. It can be done on anger, hurt, sadness, and spite. That's not to say those are the wrong fuels, but they are not the most efficient or healthy. They are suitcases without handles, and there is a cost to lugging them around every day of your life. Be driven by embracing your own worth and humanity. They are yours for the taking. Don't limp into a new life when you can walk upright and free. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you soon with another essay from An Ear for Men. In the meantime, please consider subbing to the channel. Um, and if you want to support us, there is a donate button at the top of the homepage at anearformen.com. I want to be churning out quite a bit of this content. Uh, I'm excited about getting to this level of work again. Um, and that's why I've set up this channel, uh, which is I'm not ending my activism. I'm still participating fully. But this has been a, a passion of mine for a long time and something that I want to get back to doing. And so that's what I intend to do. Uh, as I said, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.